So you can see townhomes uh, here that are four and five unit buildings. There are some smaller scale condominiums that are four units. And then if we walk to the corner and look down the street, you'll see these mansion homes sort of lining either side uh, of the street. So this is an example of using missing middle to step up a little bit in scale. It's uh, more units closer together as we get toward a center. So the housing and missing middle becomes a visual cue in transition between conventional neighborhoods and centers. And that's, that's the way we've used it here uh, very successfully. And then we sprinkle it in uh, the plant around schools and churches and other places to create this sort of crescendo, decrescendo in intensity as you move through the plant. And, so when you, when you begin to walk through a plan or ride your bike through a plan, the plan changes, the experience changes, and you create identity through the articulation of the experience in the plan. So it doesn't feel very monolithic as just one product in a large zone. So what you'll notice in the plan is that the more you get to centers of scale, the ratio of single family to missing middle housing changes. And so what we've been doing for the last 20 years is slowly building up to what will become a regional scale urban center. This space could be implemented three or four different ways. This was really targeting the value play and from the sort of housing laboratory point of view, this was really necessary for us to understand what would it take to actually get the price down. Now, what we've also discovered is that for small housing like this, we can actually stratify it and segment it. This would be kind of value minded, affordability minded, but these types of experiences can also be executed at a move up and a luxury scale. And then the qualitative characteristics of the space are simply enhanced and amplified through the urban design. So as we look at trying to solve for housing affordability, we actually have to rethink what is a house. And that's something that uh, is gonna become more and more critical because we're not gonna continue to create community while sort of eroding quality of community over time because people won't opt into it. And so I think we actually need to be somewhat revolutionary in our thinking about what housing is, how to design it, how to put it together in compelling neighborhoods so that people want it. It's really about getting the market used to the integration of things as opposed to the spatial segmentation and, and separation of zones. So this all fits in one zone. It's called the planned community zone. And we as a developer have the ability to actually lace it all together. That's that idea of zoning being a blunt tool. You can't sort of legislate good design. You have to actually navigate it and negotiate it. So we have no issue with how homes appraise now. If you're missing middle, if you're large scale, home on a big lot or a home on a small lot, it, it, we've sort of eliminated the issue. So for example, we'll have homes on 4,000 square foot lots out here that sell for $900,000 or a million dollars. We'll have homes on 4,000 square foot lots across the street that are selling for 400 to, to 600. And it simply is, is a function of the level of detail and finish, but the overall design character is consistent. But it's also appealing to young first time buyers who want to be in an urban environment. So what the builders are doing is optioning in elevators so that when people move in, they don't have to necessarily search for a single family a home anymore because master main single family takes up more land and the price of land is going through the roof. Well, street design becomes really important because when you get to a certain height, and I think it's even three story now, it, the fire code can kick in and the, then the fire marshals say, I need 26 feet of clear if they adopt that aerial apparatus section in the code. But what we're able to do is if you keep the block small enough, the fi any fires can be fought from all sides of the building and everything is within 150 feet of the minimum hose pull uh, requirement. So that's a real positive on keeping the block sizes small, keep, allows you to keep the street small. and. The, the narrower streets become traffic calming. They're no less safe, but it, it really suggests that we're designing for people and there's equity, there's balance between vehicular modes, cycling modes and pedestrian modes. So we could speak to the success of, you know, the character of being in these spaces and it's kind of fun actually to, to be in and move through these spaces. But how do we set up the scale of this that it actually becomes the muse itself becomes a social space for the community. So you'll see that here, that they, 
strung up the lights and, and they've sort of owned it. So as you begin to think about missing middle housing, you need to think through in what doses is it delivered? How does it relate? Where is it in the plan? What are the places you're making with it? So it's not just a housing cost consideration. It needs to be a much bigger conversation about what is the place you're making with it. A lot of developers, master developers, will hire civil engineers to do the master plan. And there's, there are some civil engineers that have the skill set to lay out a, a community similar to this, but, but it's, most of the time the civil engineers, they're just, it's just simply an exercise of seeing how many units you can fit onto a lot. It's not about placemaking. So it's actually a big leap for a lot of developers in those sort of contexts to actually want to pay for a, a de designer to sort of work on a master plan. So that's actually often a, a barrier that we, we hear in, from communities that are typically mostly what's getting developed is more conventional suburban development. And these communities have to perform financially just like the subdivisions. They just do it in a different way. And really what we've done is we've taken a little bit of land out of each lot and thrown it into the public realm as sort of a civic investment. It's that idea of people wanting more than just a home. They want a place too. So when you look at the taxable values in this, it's double of anything around it, simply because what we're able to get in terms of value on a much smaller frontage. So what that means long-term for cities is that housing types that are in that missing middle are more sustainable.